it like this. I'm going to timestamp what I'm talking about each particular part here coming up in this video. And while that is on the screen, I will take in a few moments of Ready Player Two. Huh. A book about the downfall that can happen when computers take over. Well, sure we'll be fine. We don't really need to keep all that in mind today. Just don't build Skynet. Seriously, don't build Skynet. And I'm also gonna talk about one of the things that I think such sites as Newegg should really stop doing because it's a bit of a scam when it comes to RAM. And we're gonna break down those parts that you need to put your first 4K editing machine together and do that whole gaming thing. The AMD gives you what I consider to be the best bang for the book as far as CPUs and Intel is, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them at all. I've had Intel-based MacBooks for years, but you're gonna hear the phrase bang for buck a lot. You're also gonna hear phrases like yes and no to answer a lot of questions, and it depends will also be an answer for a lot of things in the DIY PC build community, so get used to hearing those. <laughs> After you hear all about the parts that you need to put together a PC, you're gonna need some place to store all this information a parts list, that's where PC Part Picker comes in. Now, they're not always accurate, but they're pretty dang close to help you know what parts are compatible with each other, such as will the power supply be enough to power all the parts in your particular bill, or is the motherboard compatible with the case size? Is the RAM too big for the case size? All those kind of things are very important to know. This is where you people kind of get hung up at first. I sort of did. It's like, how in the world is all this going to go together? Once you get a handle on it, you're gonna realize it's bizarre. It's like, it's complex and how many things goes into this. It is beautifully kind of simple too. So that's gonna be the light at the end of the tunnel for all of this stuff we're going over here, your PC build. Knowing that we're taking a stance of this as a video editing machine, first, the CPU is gonna be the most important part of this particular video editing rig. For CPU, you're gonna be looking at core count, higher core count, higher thread count, the better. Video editing apps uses those cores and threads to do all sorts of things inside the video editing app. I went with the Ryzen 5. The Ryzen 5, or just, just a Ryzen 5. Zen 2, Generation 3. That is one of the things that is just definitely kind of confusing. Now we are on Zen 3 architecture. Generation 4, Series 5 for 5000s. The 4000s are in laptops and things like that as far as CPUs are concerned with AMD. Remember, we're sticking to AMD build right here. Don't let the hype of new tech ever fool you. If it worked great today, it's still gonna be working at 1201 when that new tech comes out. If the bots don't buy it all online and that's another story altogether talk graphics cards really quickly. The other real sexy part of a PC build, NVIDIA kinda has a lead when it comes to content creation right now. Look for over 2,000 CUDA cores, as they call them, and the NVIDIA does really good when it comes to things like recording footage, or streaming, or doing them all at the same time. They just have a slight edge over the AMD product. Yes, NVIDIA will work in an AMD build. It doesn't all have to match up in that. I honestly was not really sure about it first too. Premiere finally got around to using your GPU for quicker exports and rendering, something that DaVinci Resolve also does. This is where Nvidia has an advantage, but AMD also has some cards capable of pulling this off as well. Just not nearly as many as Nvidia, which is why I say it's probably most definitely way better for content creators. Now we're on to the topic I've been so feisty about. RAM. Think of RAM this way. If you want to work on your thumbnail while your video is still exporting out of Premiere Pro, whatever your non-linear editing app choice is, RAM is the thing that's going to help you be able to do that and multitask within different apps on your PC. I went with G Skills 32 gig dual DIMM sticks, DDR4 memory, clock speed 3600 megahertz. All this means is we're getting a nice pairing of RAM with the CPU within the Ryzen 5. 3600X that my particular build has. So you can look around online to see which RAM plays the best and which configuration with which CPU from AMD in the Ryzen series. The thing that's had me so upset about RAM, especially from sites like freaking Newegg that makes me want to put the 
middle finger up at them is that they'll sell RAM and label it as built for AMD rigs or label it as built for Intel when the RAM can work in either one. And in some cases, the one that says Intel, they'll actually sell for less. I actually literally tried to cancel my order and couldn't when I found out I had Intel XMP RAM thinking that wasn't gonna work and it freaking works with AMD rigs as well. And why Newegg decided to sell that RAM for a lesser price, even though it does the same thing, I don't know. That is bizarre, that is shady, and I think that's just a thing. We're taking advantage of the fact that AMD has such popularity right now with the bang for buck, as we all keep talking about with their CPUs and builds, that it seems like a bit of a greedy money grab to just charge more for something that just says works with AMD, when all the RAM will work for whatever setup you have. Next up, let's talk about storage. Not quite as sexy as GPUs and CPUs. You gotta store your beautiful footage and photos somewhere. So I went with a motherboard that's got two M.2 slots on it. The small M.2s are my personal favorites, but also the Zeta SSD. I've got one of those installed in the back of my PC as well from Team Group. What I did is load one M.2 with all the apps. The boot has got Premiere, DaVinci, software loads off the first M.2. I can work off of that second M.2 and I can cache any of the footage to the slower SSD, which is what that's there for, my Zeta SSD drive. So that's generally kind of the setup. Might have something saved to the cloud for storage reasons, or might have something saved to an external drive, depending on the project and how much I'm worried about really backing this project up. I can go really all the way. I haven't used an NES or a NAS setup yet. I have not really had a need to do that because I'm not really handling that much video footage and just using these drives and this Frankenstein of a setup that worked kind of fine for me so far. And that leads me to motherboards. The thing with motherboards is you wanna get ones that have the things that you want to use. Like for me personally, I went with the ASUS Tough Gaming Board because it had Wi-Fi on it. Now that really did matter because I knew I would probably have this PC in different rooms. I really didn't need that Wi-Fi. <laughs> Maybe you want an optical out on your motherboard. All these are things to take into consideration. Power supply. Don't cheap out on your power supply. I went with a Thermal Take, one of the bigger brands on power supplies. It was nicely reviewed, but you will notice when you're shopping for power supplies, the reviews are all over the place, up and down. Modular, semi-modular, non-modular. That just means do the cables come completely off of the power supply or are they always constantly hooked up? And you're thinking, hey, I'm always gonna need like the CPU power cable or the graphics card power cable. I don't really have to worry about that ever coming off of my power supply, which this is where your case will come in to play in this decision making. More on that in just a little bit when we move over to the dark room. Uh, modular power supply might be a little bit more costly, but you don't have to worry about the cable colors, maybe being a color that you don't like with your particular build. And another situation I ran into was that my graphics card, the 2070, only took one connector, not two. So I was able to run an extender there with one connector, so it wasn't just one piece just weirdly dangling on the machine, which was a personal eyesore, not a deal breaker, a big deal, but I thought that could be done a little bit nicer and neater. Now with all this talk of cables, you would think my cable management would be a-okay. Let's discuss fans and let's discuss the Corsair D4000 Airflow over here. Get a table or something like that to put your computer on so it's not on the ground, collecting dust way easier. So lift it up a little bit and get a little spray blower and blow this thing out. Trying to keep that dust out of there. The reason to build this thing was for 4K editing. So just how does it perform? I'm gonna put a stat up here. A hell of a lot better than a 2017 MacBook Pro. A hell of a lot better. Hell of a lot better. I absolutely love gaming on this machine, as well as streaming, as well as taking my video feed in so I can be on the screen for streaming and I'll figure out more <laughs> properly how to do that. That's like another skill set, being a game streamer, but I also wanna stream things like Lightroom edits and Photoshop edits live from off of this machine. All that is no problem. On this particular Corsair D4000 Airflow, I highly recommend a case that's got a mesh front to let airflow 
through the front and out the back. It's a push-pull configuration. The Corsair 4000D Airflow, it only comes with two stock fans, weirdly, so I took these out only because they're not RGB fans. This is purely a cosmetic change. I went ahead and got six extra fans to go in here, and that's a little controversial. So the controversy is that these cheaper fans that I got a three pack for 20 bucks off of Amazon from the Up Here brand, cheaper than cheap. Will these things possibly catch fire? A, most likely not. It's not drawing enough power. we will have customization options because it's not hooked into the headers on the board. So that just means you can control fan speed through the BIOS, off of the motherboard. Look at where their power supply is and how clean that basement area is. Now, look at mines. This is where my power supply is. And here is the rat's nest of cables and cores. There is no room to fit mechanical drives in here. I've got holes here to route cords, cables from all over the case. The cable management and flow up top is really good. Down in the basement, not so much. And I gotta reiterate, as complex as it might seem to put a PC together, it is beautifully simple too. As far as when your PC is all up and running, how to get windows on it, and how to get graphics cars, drivers, and all that stuff, I've linked some videos down in the description for you to check out for the people I've looked at to help me get up and running after the build got put together, and also a couple before I put the build together. From just a couple of months of watching, I'm gonna link some of my favorite videos down below, show you how to get a OBS up and running. That's gonna help you streaming on Twitch or YouTube or wherever you wanna stream. All those videos in the links below. Thank you so much for watching, and if you're looking for some photography-themed apparel, I appreciate it if you swing by JaegerShots.com. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe, and never miss a shot from JaegerShots.com.